sister, a daughter, or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife. Islam gave her all her rights in her life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahi wa rahmani rahim. We ask Allah to send his mercy and blessings on Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We ask Allah to guide us, to strengthen us, grant us knowledge, uh, in increase our worship of him. We ask him to give us the ability to worship him more, to keep us on the straight path, uh, to forgive us our sins and grant us Jannah, inshallah. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to today's episode of Women's Issues. And the topic for today is an interesting topic, and it's about obedience. The wife's obedience to the husband, or should it be the husband's obedience to the wife? <laughs> Which one should it be? It should be the first one, of course, that wives should be obedient to their husbands. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given both men and, we, men and women rights over each other. And in terms of the rights that a wife has over her husband is that the husband is supposed to provide for her, protect her, um, support her and, and, and be the guardian of the house. This is what the, the man's role is in the family. And likewise, the wife is to raise the children, is to protect her chastity, to protect the home and manage the home, but protect the home when the husband is not there and also to obey the husband. And this is an instruction that Allah has given us to obey our husbands. So when it comes to obeying a husband, we're actually obeying Allah. First and foremost, we're obeying Allah when we do it. Now I know sometimes we don't want to obey our husbands and in some non-Muslim countries, this obedience to husbands can be seen as the woman being subservient. And that's not the case. As I said, when we are obedient to our husbands, we are actually obeying Allah's command. So it's not being subservient at all. It's obeying Allah. Now, unfortunately, there are occasions where a man will abuse this right and will try and um, get very upset if the wife doesn't obey him in absolutely everything. And it can be a very small thing very small thing. Uh, for instance, if he wants chicken for dinner and there was no chicken, so she had to buy meat and he ordered her, I want chicken, you have to make me chicken for dinner. And then she can't because there was no chicken and he's going to then punish her or get mad at her because he didn't get chicken for dinner. I know it's a very silly example, but things like this can happen when men abuse this, this right that Allah has given them because that he will say to the wife, well, you're not obeying me. You're not obeying me. And that's ridiculous. It's a crazy way of thinking. We have to obey our husbands in, in things that are necessary, not in irrelevant things like chicken or meat. We've got a clip. Let's take a look. Mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife, Islam gave her a husband is the head of his family and its guardian. He carries this responsibility because his physical makeup makes him more fit to carry the burden of life and support his family. Allah the Almighty says, Men are in charge of women by right of what Allah has given one over the other and what they spend for maintenance from their wealth. A husband's right to obedience is confirmed in the Hadith. If a woman prays her five daily prayers, fasts her month Ramadan, guards her chastity, and obeys her husband, she will be told to enter paradise from whichever gate she wishes. This kind of obedience is important to maintain the family structure and protect and empower it. The wife's duty is to guard her honor as well as her husband's. She is entrusted to spend money wisely, and manage the affairs of her family to the best of its interest. In the prophetic hadith, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, 
and a woman is the guardian of her husband's house and is responsible for it. The obligatory obedience is not blind obedience or obedience without restrictions, conditions, or limits. Rather, it is the obedience of the righteous wife to the righteous, pious husband, whose personality she trusts and believes in, and believes in his sincerity and righteousness. Obedience that is based on consultation and mutual understanding promotes the entity of the family and reinforces its foundations and strength. There is no consultant better than a faithful and truthful wife. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would consult his wives and follow their opinions in important matters. He consulted his wife, Um Salma, may Allah be pleased with her, in the most critical situations. Her consultation and wise opinion were important in putting an end to that crisis and returning matters to normality. While a wife is obliged to listen to her husband, the husband should never abuse or misuse this right. He should never burden her with what is beyond her scope. He should observe her physical and psychological conditions and never be too harsh or stiff in asking her to do something. He should help her when she needs, stand by her and shower her with love and kindness. The Prophet, peace be upon him, set the most wonderful example of a marital relationship in his personal life. The Qur'an and the prophetic practice clearly illustrates the relationship between spouses, a relationship that is based on tranquility, unconditional love, tenderness, protection, encouragement, peace, kindness, comfort, justice, and mercy. It's very important to understand that when it comes to obeying our husbands, of course, we must disobey them. Yes, I said, we must disobey them if they are telling us to do something haram. If our husband wants us to go to a nightclub and drink alcohol and dance and wear revealing clothing, of course, we're not going to obey. So we're only going to obey our husbands when it is halal, when it is it's right to obey. If it's something haram that he wants us to do, of course, we're not going to obey that. Definitely not. And this is where brothers need to understand that it's not blind obedience, that we have to obey when it's necessary. Now, should there be any times when the husband should obey the wife? Well, I'm sure a lot of the sisters are sitting there going, yes, 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 the, hus the husband should be obeying the wife. But I think, and this is just my opinion, a smart husband is one who encourages his wife and, and, and allows her to be part of any decision-making process in the family. And then it gives her the feeling that she is being part of any decisions and that he's not just ordering her and saying, this is the way it's going to be. You know, we're going to move to another country. Well, do I have a choice? No, you don't. That's a husband that's ab abusing this right. But discuss it and then come to an agreement. And this is a smart husband. And husbands, you should always remember that a happy wife is a happy home. So include her in the decision-making process. Like Prophet Muhammad did, peace be upon him, he consulted his wives. So brothers, you shouldn't just take all the decisions when it comes to the family and think that my wife must follow what I'm telling her to do because she has to be obedient to me. No, that, that leads to an unhappy relationship and an unhappy home. So we have to be very careful of that. And sisters, we do have to remember that the times when we don't want to be obeying our husbands, because there are cases when we just think, no, well, that's a stupid thing to do, or I don't want to do that, it's not going to be good for me, um, or he's being unreasonable. We always have to remember that when we do obey him, we are obeying Allah. And we know that for a woman, if when a woman dies, if her husband is pleased with her, she may enter Jannah through any gate, subhanAllah. So even in the difficult times when we think, no, I don't want to obey, we should be remembering that. What is the end goal? The end goal is to please Allah. And if we can g gain the, 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 the pleasure from our husbands through being obedient to him or to them, then inshallah, we can gain Allah's pleasure as well and the reward of Jannah. 
So always try to remember that. Always try to remember that Allah is the one that we are trying, that we are aiming to obey and not so much our husbands. Because it can be difficult sometimes. It really can be difficult. And especially for those who live in the West, where it seems to be against women's rights for women to be obeying their husbands. You know, the w part of the women's right movement is for women to have their voice, to, to make their decisions and to, to be able to stand up for themselves and, and, and have their voice. And that's absolutely fine. But we can't let that overshadow or overtake our obedience to Allah. And as I said, it's really important to go back to the point of we're never going to obey when our husband is asking us to do something haram because then that is putting us, causing us to have sin as well. And there are times when husbands don't give their wives their due rights. So in that situation, you know, the wife can sit back and think, well, why should I obey him when I'm not getting my rights as a wife? And that's a valid point. It's a really valid point. But again, I go back to the point of that we are supposed to be obeying Allah and Allah says to obey our husbands. So or also remember that Allah will punish the husbands who don't give their wives their rights and vice versa. Let's have a look at another clip. Mother, a sister, a daughter or a wife, Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter or a wife, Islam gave her all her rights in her life. As we could see in the clip, it's supposed to be a partnership. Marriage is supposed to be a partnership. It doesn't always happen like that. It's not, you know, nothing is plain sailing as they say. There are ups and downs. But if each spouse tries to give each other their rights, then it's going to make for a much, much better life together, a happier life together, a happier marriage. So one of the things is for the husband to give his wife her due rights and again for the wife to give her husband his due rights. And one of those rights, as we know, is obeying him in halal matters. So uh, like I said before, sisters, as difficult as it can be sometimes, we just always have to remember that we are doing it for Allah to grant us that place in Jannah. We don't want to go to the hellfire because we have been disobeying our husbands. We don't want to be with that group that's down there. We want to be in Jannah. We want to be in, in the peaceful place and you know, having a, leading a, a beautiful eternity because we have done what Allah instructed and that was obeying our husbands. We have a break. I will see you after the break. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A sister, a daughter, or a wife, Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife, Islam gave her all her rights in her life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back brothers and sisters. And I'm delighted to introduce our guest today who is uh, our brother Imam Amr Dabur and he's joining us from California. Assalamu alaikum brother, how are you today? 
Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Doing great. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm very well. Thank you. I'm very well. Alhamdulillah. I'm very pleased to see you on the show again. It's nice to, nice to have you back with us. Thank you. Thank you. Jazakallah khair for inviting me. You're welcome. Um, now, our topic for today is obedience, the wife's obedience towards her husband. Now, why should wives obey their husbands? Why shouldn't it be the other way around? All right, very, uh, very heavy uh, topic, alhamdulillah. But uh, I would quickly say that uh, uh, we, have to, we have to really look at it the right way. And the right way to look at this is uh, sometimes the terms or the words uh, when translated could carry some negative meanings. When you say obedience, that is uh, somehow connected to some negative uh, connotations in there. But when we understand and we should understand what's really uh, the content of, of, of anything before we can form any kind of realization or understanding of it. So when we're talking about uh, family, we're talking about a system that's no less of importance uh, than any system that could be out there. The system of a country, of a company, of a, uh, um, any group, any union that's getting together. Usually the system would have one head, one leader, one person who is responsible. That doesn't mean this is the uh, the most important person or the, uh, the only person to, to lead or to, to uh, uh, have input into uh, whatever system that could be out there. But there should be, at the end of the day, we have one CEO for this company, one president or prime minister or whatever leader for that system. The family in Islam is no less of, of, of important. It is very important. In Islam, actually, it it's, could be more important than all of the above mentioned systems and that's why we should have at, at the end of the day one captain for this ship not a dictator but one captain and the captain is the husband and and for the system to work we should have some some kind of of, of i wouldn't say hierarchy but some kind of leader and the leader in this case is the uh the husband and that's why for the system to work we should have the crew or the rest of the uh, people in that system to respect that system. Mm -hmm. I would just uh, introduce it in this way. Mm -hmm. Unless we have some kind of law in this country, some kind of, of, of power for that president, for that CEO, for that manager, uh, they wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't have a system in the first place. Mm -hmm. Just imagine a country with two presidents or more. Just imagine a, a company with several CEO. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to go nowhere. Hmm. That's a really valid point, actually. Uh, you know, you've, it's great to look at it in that respect because, as you said, two, two just don't work at all. Um, you brought up about a dictatorship. And unfortunately, sometimes this can happen, is that husbands will run their homes like a dictatorship. So what would you advise to those brothers um, in, in how they should sort of change their approach to this obedience? Very, very good question. Getting to marriage itself, we should really uh, realize the importance of what we are getting ourselves into. Husband or wife or anybody who is, who is uh, a part of that. The wali should uh, do the role, the husband, the wife, uh, understanding and realizing the, 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 the rights and responsibilities and understanding that you're getting into a contract that, that has a lot of rules in Islam and, and and a lot of significance in Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it not just a contract, but he called it a covenant. Not just a covenant, but a heavy covenant. Mithaqan ghaliza. So you are, as in the hadith, as the Prophet ﷺ said, addressing men, he said, you took them by the word of God. You had this, you got into this covenant by the, the word of God. Bi kalimatillah, bi amanatillah. So uh, we have to realize that, that we are reporting directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If, if we got to uh, this relationship with that understanding, I don't think the person would, uh, would just abuse the right. But the abuse is there in any of these systems that are, are mentioned. And also Islam provide, provides us the way how to handle and deal with uh, such people who abuse the right and, and how to prevent it in the first place. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the obedience and, and what we should be obeying our husbands in, are, are there anything, I mean, we spoke in the program earlier that we shouldn't be when it comes to haram matters. So what are the boundaries there of when a wife should be obedient to a husband? 
Again, a very good question, but let me just add one little thing to the previous question. So mm -hmm. the wife is the one who would elect that leader in the first place mm -hmm. when she uh, approves or gives consent of this marriage, because if she does not give consent for that marriage in the first place, it will never happen. Uh, she has to elect that leader in the first place or that uh, captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. And once you elect that captain, you are actually the one when we vote for that president or for that person, we are the people, we are the ones who give him or, or her the right to, uh, or, or put them in power, uh, basically. But once they are in power, then let them do their job, and they are supposed to do their job. If they don't, then we have other ways that we can talk about. just wanted to add this. Mm, uh, but uh, back to your question, uh, why does she should follow him, or what are the... The, uh, the consequences of not, of not uh, obeying him? Was this the question? No, sorry. The question was um, in terms of the, what uh, the obedience. Is there any boundary in terms of Got what it. we can or can't uh, yes. know, be obedient yes. to? So, exactly. So this is not an unconditional obedience in the sense of obedience, blindly obeying the husband. But like I said, it's just as long as he is leading in the right way, as long as he is not uh, violating any of the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any of the guidelines of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also as long as he is not asking her to do something that's beyond her capability. So it is uh, all he has to do is just lead within uh, and, 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 and give an instructions, not an instructions, but you know, when he asks of, uh, something of her, it should be within her capability, and it shouldn't be in violation of any of the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end of the day, if we look at the Quran, subhanAllah, it is not like this is the leader, this is the follower, uh, he issues uh, guidelines and instructions, she follows. It's not like this. It is, you know, when we talk about legal matters, when we talk about, always when we talk about law, it's, it's a little rigid and tough. And when we talk about law, it's, it's always when, when people disagree, when people uh, say, what, where is my boundaries, where are your boundaries? But the essence and the foundation of marriage is, is, is honestly not that. When you read the Quran, the Quran, almost every ayah and every hadith talking about marriage and even divorce, if it happens, the severing and ending of that contract of marriage, you will see, Sister Vanessa, that there is a very, very common word in Arabic that's coming in all of these texts that is bil ma'roof or the word ma'roof, which is in kind way, in mm -hmm. kindness. When you talk, when you're, you know, when you live with them, and, and it should be all done in the kind way, in the nice way. Everybody is giving, everybody is uh, going according to the norms, according to what's common amongst between good people, and, and according to just the rules of, of kindness. Mm -hmm. That word, if it is to be embraced, I think we would not have to even discuss uh, obedience and who should follow you know, and who should give instructions because everything is should be done mutually. Kindness is, is mutual amongst them. Mm. Running the affairs of the uh, of the house should be uh, done according to the mutual um, uh, discussion uh, of what what could be the best uh, for the family. But it happens only when we have a disagreement, and then they try, they discuss, they shall we move out or not move out, and and we. One person uh, believes one way, the other person believes otherwise. Then we have to have some kind of final say. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that's uh, for the husband in this case. Mm. And if she does not like the outcome, if, if there's a big decision, for example, talking law right now, not, not talking ethical and what should she do, but if, if she comes to the point that she disagrees with that big, huge decision, there are other ways to deal with it or mm. even leave the marriage completely, which is something that's not advisable, but... Yeah. She has one way to uh, get out of, of that whole thing. Mm. That's a really good point, uh, particularly about the kindness. You know, we should be having that in all aspects of our, our life, not just between husband and wife. And if I'd right. like to just, I'd like to move on to the question about what, um, what references do we have in the Quran and in Hadith for women who don't dis or don't, uh, sorry, who disobey their husbands? Is there, what's the punishment? Do we know what that is? Yes, uh, Quran is talking about this, and again, we should not take anything out of context. When Quran is talking about a specific person, he's not talking about all women. When Quran is talking about a woman uh, that is trying to undermine the whole system, think of it uh, as somebody who is, there is a system that's standing, and there is someone who is coming and, and breaking the laws and trying to 
not just break the law and, 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 and try to go away with it, but they are trying to undermine the whole system. In this case, it is the family. It could be in some Western countries, family itself doesn't have that much weight in the first place. But in Islam, it's very, very critical. And, and to be, it is to be very respected by each one of them that if somebody is to undermine that system, being him or her, being him the husband or the wife in, in that case, there is uh, um, uh, some kind of, of huge, uh, you know, kind of punishment or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is threatening them on one side. If the husband is the one who is wasting, literally wasting, not doing his uh, job and, 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 and leading or misleading, in this case, his family, the Prophet ﷺ said, which is sufficient for the man as a sin, is to waste those that he is in charge of. So if he is misleading his, how, his, his wife or his family by not providing for them the best of ways, by not leading them, to as-sarat al-mustaqim, to, to that which is right, then that is that is the biggest sin that any man can put himself into. On the other hand, uh, if it is coming from the wife's side, then again, we will see a lot of texts in the Quran, in the Sunnah, in the Hadith, that there's going to be a punishment that she, if, if the woman is in a state of rebelliousness, that she is trying to undermine the system, that uh, her actions are showing or reflecting that kind of, of, of undermining of the whole system, then she does not go even for one night without having the angels being uh, angry with her, and obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be angry in return, angels are making dua uh, 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 um, against this lady mm -hmm. as she goes to bed while having the husband not, you know, not literally not uh, being in harmony with that whole system. Mm -hmm. That is one of the texts that's talking about the wife in the, in the, on the other hand. So a husband, if he does not do his job as he's supposed to, that is the worst sin that he can put himself into uh, based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, authentic hadith. The woman, on the other hand, if she is the one undermining the system, she is also putting herself into a grave and a great and big sin, uh, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And th this is the point right here. You would not find much punishments here in terms of putting somebody into prison. It might mount into that, but Islam connects uh, marriage uh, to uh, your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with you being pious or being God-fearing and God-consciousness or not. Mm. It is you being a good Muslim or not uh, in the first place. Mm. So uh, by doing that, Islam is actually trying to make us make the, uh, the, the correction from within, mm. not just having somebody from out there uh, threatening us or, uh, uh, you know, taking us to court or any of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good point. Thank you for uh, for sharing that with us. Unfortunately, brother, we've come to the end of the segment. I'd, uh, as you said, it's a it's a big, it's a strong topic. Um, it's one that we could continue talking about, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. So, once again, thank you so much for joining us on the program. May Allah reward you and, and bless you and grant you jannah, inshallah. Um, and I mean, we'll, inshallah, we'll see you on the program again, inshallah. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Jazakallah khairan. Wa iyaakum. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, we could see from the wonderful and very insightful answers uh, from uh, Brother Amr that, you know, there, it, it is a partnership. And like he explained it, it's, it's like a, a, a process. It's something, it's the, you've got somebody has to lead. There has to be a leader. And that leader does have a lot of responsibility. And if they're not leading in the right way, in the way that Allah has instructed them to, then they, they will be punished. Allah will punish them. And likewise, for, for the wives, for the family, they need to be uh, you know, obeying the husbands because they are the leaders. Um, so we do need to remember this. Um, just a note to brothers before we conclude, do take your uh, your responsibilities that Allah has given you, take them seriously, because as I said, you will be held accountable. And sisters also, likewise, we will be held accountable as well for our actions. And as I said previously, Allah has instructed us to obey our husbands. So therefore, if we do so, we will be obeying Allah and inshallah, we will be gaining his pleasure and reward. We've come to the end of the program. So until next time, obey your husbands and husbands, please give your wives their rights and always remember Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister, a daughter, or a wife, Islam gave her all her rights in her life. A mother, a sister, a daughter, or a wife, 
Islam gave her all.